Hi everybody, this is Courtney from Fiber Fox Studios. And today I am just popping in with one of my little podcasts and I wanted to show you guys something um, where I film. This is where I film at in my little tiny shabin that I live in. And I wanted to show you a really cool feature, something that my uh, husband made for me to kind of like start out and then we're gonna get into what I've been doing and what I've been working on. So hopefully you guys are interested to see this right here behind me and what it actually is. So right now it is a stairwell, so it looks, <laughs> but it's actually a fold down table for me. So this little thing right here is my table that I film at. I can work here. Um, in the back there you see some of my overflow yarn and I've got some projects that I wanted to show you guys today. Um, I did want to mention that I've been loving reading all of the comments and everything. I really appreciate all the feedback and all that. But for the giveaway, the comments where everybody's telling me where they're at in the world, like it's amazing to me. Um, being new to YouTube, and I don't know if it gets more specific as time goes on, but being new, when I look at the YouTube Creator Studio, it shows me the like analytics is what it's called and in that section all I could tell was US was where my views were coming from and other places was a very very tiny like 0.9% something like that and I know it's not as accurate because I'm still so new the data is not you know as as accurate and there's not as much for it to analyze so I know over time it will change and it will probably show me more information but I didn't know I had any Canadian crocheters watching, so hi guys in Canada. And I didn't know that I had um, people from other countries, there's someone from India that's watching, um, Australia, there's several of you guys out there. And it's really interesting to see that. And then as far as the US goes, like I've come to find that there's people that are very, very close to me that are watching. There are people that are far, far away from me that are watching, uh, Washington State, um, uh, California is another one. Um, I've got some Arkansas. Um, I don't think I've seen a Mississippi yet, but I'd have to go back and check. Um, I've even got as far away as northern Minnesota, so almost to Canada. And then, of course, like I said, I've got Canadian crocheters, too. Um, Massachusetts is another one that's real far, and Oklahoma. I mean, there's just so many states, even Texas. So it's great to see, and that's why I asked that question, is I, I wanted to see where everybody was at so it's really really been a joy to me to see all of that information i appreciate you guys sharing that and i appreciate all the entries i think we're around 100 or so entries into the giveaway and that ends on 31st of october so in the last uh little podcast to go ahead and move on to my next uh thing that i wanted to talk about in the last podcast i had brought up a top that I've been working on and it ended up actually becoming this poncho you see me wearing and this poncho is now a tutorial on my channel as well and um, I have really the top that I wanted to make with this uh, particular stitch pattern I've been really struggling with it um, I, I'm trying to make sure that I include all sizes and that's that's where my struggle is it's not the pattern itself um, it's the actual way to design it where I can change that for all sizes. It has been difficult, especially with the way I was originally approaching this particular um, design to do it for the smaller sizes. Like it just was not going to work out. And then even going for some of the larger sizes, the shape of it was kind of being lost in the piece. So I've been working and working and working on that and not getting a whole lot of anywhere. I've done a lot of uh, crocheting and pulling it back out. So that's been, you know, a learning experience, I can at least say. Um, and my ball winder has been getting some heavy duty use <laughs> because I've had so much yarn, you know, I'm getting, I'm essentially getting almost a complete piece made, the complete top. And that's how I can start putting it together and doing measurements and things like that and all along the way I'm writing all these notes out and only to realize 
it's not gonna work out. <laughs> it will basically look like a potato sack on someone and, and that's not what I'm going for, you know, like it's it's fine like sometimes to have like a boxy piece or something like that, but this particular top, what I had in my mind, if I can like actually get to the point where I make this thing, um, what I had in my mind was something that was kind of figure flattering. It was gonna be like a layering piece so you don't want to layer on something that's going to make you look, you know, uh, bigger than what you are. Just not flatter your figure in general, you know. I, I mean, it's supposed to be light and lacy. And I was thinking something kind of, you know, not exactly sexy, but in a way maybe, you know, you could use that word. Um, feminine probably would be the better word for that. So that's what I was thinking of. And I have struggled and struggled and made and made and pulled out and pulled out so frog 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 a whole lot and I do think that I'm going to be able to get somewhere with it just please be patient you know because <laughs> it's it is a process and and I thought I had it pretty much nailed down until I started trying to do adjustments for smaller sizes and then putting it together and like I tried on one that I made that should have been my size and yeah it was like <laughs> way too big so I'm like oh no all my all my counts and things for the larger sizes that I am you know it, it's gonna be massive on them and they're gonna be like I worked on this and worked on this and I ended up with this huge piece of thing that I can't even wear so the original panels that I'd been showing um, to kind of save that work because I, I did four of them and I was, you know, I'd put them together. And when I, when I start tacking things together and when I do bind off and all when I'm designing, I don't bind off in a sense that I've got a stitch marker in there holding that little stitch. I, I'm not trying to waste yarn or anything. So um, I had kind of stitched it up in a way where I could take those stitches right back out if I um, didn't like it. And so I had those four panels and they're so pretty and I had had an idea for a poncho and I was working on a different design like stitch you know wise for it and then I kind of dawned on me like these panels that I've made for my size actually work out great for the poncho I wanted to make so that's where this right here that's the tutorial that I uploaded um, I guess it was a few days ago now it was last week maybe um, within this last week I mean um, that got uploaded I finished up mine on Sunday night and I wore it to work um, the very next day I did end up actually going ahead and put an edge on mine in my tutorial I left it kind of open you can do that if you'd like um, I know you can see right here, there's like, these are little peacoats that I've got going on. And then along this edge, I'll bring it on up for y'all. Um, along the bottom edge, what I ended up doing, let me stand up, maybe that'll work. What I ended up doing on the bottom edge is another little peacoat around it. And I wish I could get back enough where you could see. But it's just a little cute little peacoat all around the edge there. So made this thing up and um, then started working on the top again trying to come at it from a different angle and that actually worked out pretty well in a sense because a new design something else you know a new creation was born from that and it ended up being a scarf and from one of them one of the test panels that I'd done I was kind of thinking do this instead of doing where it's these panels and it's going in one direction, I decided to kind of turn it and make it like a long piece um, that would essentially come down and meet in the middle. And that would give me the sleeve that I was going for. And I ended up not liking that either. <laughs> it wasn't working out either. And so I'm gonna reach back and grab the piece that I ended up doing. <laughs> so, this is what was born from my failure at the top. Because <laughs> the top so far, it has been a failure. I, I, I do have a new approach for it, and I'm going to be working on that. Um, and hopefully, 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 I will be able to actually roll that out in another week or so. I'm not going <laughs> to nail down a specific time because... 
you, I don't, this one's kicking my butt. I mean, that's all I can really say is it's, it's a lot more involved than what I was anticipating. I think that it's just I had my mindset a certain way. And it just wasn't working out. So I've had to rethink it over and over <laughs> and come up with something a little different. So, so, but what I did get from that was this is the same thing. It's what I'm wearing right now. It's the same stitch pattern, but it's actually worked on both sides. So I am going to do a tutorial for this as well. And I don't know how well this is showing up in the camera, so let's try to use that pasty white skin. It's the same thing, it just comes out from each side. And I hope you guys can see that, because it is, it's so pretty, it's so pretty, <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> um, this is size one yarn, but I don't want people who are scared of smaller yarns or just really hate working with them to feel like they're completely being left out. Um, I've been working it up in other size yarns as well. This is only taken, and it, probably because I'm I'm now very, very familiar with the stitch pattern. Like, I refer to my diagram just, like, a little bit to basically make sure that my counts, it, like, ending and stuff, my count for that row um, inside of the chain is correct. So, I, like, just glance over at it now. I remember this thing now, <laughs> but the way that it worked up is originally, you know, I just had one side and it was going to drape and it was just going to be a sleeve and then meet in the middle and the front. And that just, like I said, wasn't working out. And I got to looking at it and I'm like, that is actually so pretty. So I ended up crocheting on the other side. So I just came down, same pattern, did it on the other side. I've been doing it in some larger yarns. This is size one, but I'm gonna do a tutorial on it. And like I said, I've been testing out some other yarn sizes. And I have found that it looks really pretty with bulky yarn too. And you do less, like this is, this is only two just to kind of show you, this is only two rows. Like if you look at it, this is the center. Let me turn it this way and I might help y'all. So this is our center right here. And it's only two repeats, I should say, not two rows, because this is, there's eight rows per repeat on this thing, on this particular. So this would be 16 rows. So I've got 16 rows on this side, 16 rows on that side. Hopefully that shows. And so not a lot of rows, not a lot of hours. A um, few hours worth of work. Well, a little bit more than a few, like four or five hours. And once you get the hang of it, um, I could easily see where if you were like sitting down in the evenings and just, you know, a few evenings, you would have this finished up. Um, and that's not being familiar with the pattern. So... The way the ends worked out, and I've only kind of temporarily done something on the end of one of mine, because I do want to show you this, is the way this worked out bringing these together is it made this cute little like V almost at the end. So, I mean, let me try to move this out of the way so you can just see this. So, there at the end, it just kind of folds and it makes a perfect into the scarf in a lot of ways so I mean you don't have to do like an edging there and I'm gonna be leaving the edges along the the sides of it I'm gonna leave those as they are but on this other end and I've got a stitch marker on it because like I said I haven't 100% decided I did the little pom-poms the little pom-poms along the edge and it's still got that same kind of V formation going on but I did the pom-poms and I mean, I'm liking that. I was trying it on earlier. Um, you know, I, I love stuff like this. I like the laciness of it and all. And I'm, I am, you know, in the Southeast, so not ever going to see any snow. <laughs> so, <laughs> snow is not my future, but take a look at I don't know if you can see very well, but this, like I said, this is bulky yarn. 
and this is just a test panel and I actually did um, foundation ovals which if you watch the crochet kimono tutorial you know exactly what I'm talking about but I did foundation ovals to make it where you can just work in and I figured out the count on the foundation ovals and of course I already know the count for like if you're just doing a chain start and that's how I started this because like I said it was supposed to be my top <laughs> and so it was not supposed to you know um end up being a scarf but it did and it works great you know you could chain or you can do the foundation ovals um i think i'm going to use the foundation ovals in my tutorial because they do make it easy and it makes it really easy for like a beginner crocheter to see where you're going to be working when you go to do the other side. So this is like one side done, and it's probably good at the peak, probably about six inches. So this is one repeat though. So this is eight rows. I mean, can you imagine like, I mean, I think if I had went up a little bit on my hook size, it would have even more of a drape, but like once this gets washed and all, I feel like this will be just like absolutely soft and it'll have a really nice drape to it um this is barcelona loops and threads barcelona yarn and so in bulky size five yarn i one pattern repeat on each side you're gonna end up with you know a really nice size scarf and the length of it is up to you you could even do this infinity style um where you're just looping it around you but it's really it's really flexible and that will kind of include people who do like to crochet with bulky or have some laying around they don't know what to do with it and they're looking for kind of a really pretty scarf i mean this is going to be warm i mean you know that will be kind of warm <laughs> warm enough for you know me down here in the south but this like i'd be sweating if i had this on right now and i can say that because the kimono cardigan, the that stitch pattern that I used in that particular design, that little crochet diagram that I found, I made a sweater out of this right here using that stitch pattern. And it was long sleeve, it was sweater, it was for winter, I wear it in the winter. Um, and it was warm. Now, I can say the sleeves, you know, because obviously I wore a tank top underneath it. Um, you could wear a long sleeve. I just didn't have one. So, you know, I made it and I wore a tank top underneath it. And it is not that cold here. So, you could totally, totally 100% wear long sleeve underneath it. And, I mean, if you're in a really colder climate, like, it would be, it would be hot. <laughs> I would get, like, especially because it always, like, starts out cold and then gets a little bit warmer. And being in the sun in that thing, it was like, whoo. <laughs> but um when the wind would cut through like where i had my tank top totally still warm toasty perfectly fine the sleeves where my bare skin was oh <laughs> on those really brisk days and i know like 75 degrees is brisk to me y'all so like don't pick on me for that but i'm just saying like when i was cold and the wind would start kicking through the holes in the sleeves i mean i'm that was not warm so like my point is is if you're up north and you were to do something like that um even convert this over into a sweater you, you're gonna need something underneath it and that will make it as warm as if the sweater had no holes and you had this tightly crocheted um garment on so just don't be afraid of that that it's you know so many holes and all it's so loose it can still be really warm. It's going to depend on what you are putting it over. You know, what you're layering underneath it can really make a huge difference. And it doesn't have to be, you know, something bulky underneath. I'm talking about this is, you know, a thin, like, cotton tank top. And I was totally warm, except for those few, you know, like, five days that we had some really bad cold snap. And it was, like, really bad with the wind. And it was kicking up in just my arms. I'd feel that cold. I would know it is winter. So, I am going to uh, get this up. This will be a very warm scarf. I will have the information on how to do it in size 4 yarn. Because I don't want my newbies that don't have a, different, a bunch of different varieties of size yarns around. And I don't want people who absolutely detest small yarn to feel like they are just... I mean, I do include this information in all of my tutorials, like down below how to substitute. 
but I don't want them to feel like I am strictly only designing things that look really fabulous in the tiny yarn. Because this right here, I mean, I love it. I'm going to be making one, I can tell you that already. I am totally 100% going to make one of these. I'm going to have to buy something that, you know, really complements it because I like to really make whatever on the outfit that I've crocheted be the focal point. So I want anything with it to just make the crochet pop and stand out even more. So I may even do a sweater out of this. Like that could be coming too. I've been playing around with that idea. Um, so we will see. So there are some new and exciting things or they're exciting to me. So hopefully they're exciting to you. Um, those things are coming and the giveaway is going and going strong. And I was doing some reorganizing before I did this video and there's going to be, you know, more giveaways as soon as the, the one ends here in October, there will be a new one starting in November and we'll keep doing that on a monthly basis so far. I think that's the way it's going to work for me. Um, I need to move some yarn out because <laughs> I really want to go shopping <laughs> and get me some more. So I am definitely kind of focused and, and very motivated, we'll say, to make more room. Um, you know, I only have so much. Like, this is obviously not all my yarn. <laughs> not at all. And there's more underneath the thing. If you look down there, that's a door. <laughs> and if you look what's showing up over there, um, that's another door and, uh, they have yarn in them. <laughs> so, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little chit chat. We won't go on any longer. Please like, subscribe, and share, and tell all your friends about me. Um, I have gone up from that first little bit of time, first couple weeks, 21 subscribers. Now, I believe it's been a month since I uploaded my very first tutorial. I've got several out there, so not just talking videos, you know, several, and I'll keep doing these, and I'll keep doing tutorials, and there's obviously more tutorials coming, um, but I'm now up earlier when I looked. It was 233 subscribers, so not everybody's entered the giveaway, so that kind of gives me hope that people are finding and liking not just the giveaway side of the channel, but the tutorial side and the talking side of the channel. So I am really, really enjoying this. I hope you guys are as well. Like I said, please like, subscribe, and share. Tell all your friends, and hope to see you next time. Thanks and bye.